Hello, PodFam, and hello, Rachel. How are you today? I am doing good, Laura. I'm also feeling a little bit weird, though, because, guys, our recording schedule is usually um, Thursdays every week, and it's Monday. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm the wrench in the plan. (laughs) It's all right. I understand, but definitely – when when we have our recording nights, it's like a signal that the week is about to end. Yes. You know? And now tomorrow I'm going to show up and be like, what do you mean it's not half day? It's not Friday. Friday. I know, right? What, what do you mean? What do you mean it's not the weekend? But it's it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. My bad. I just entered horse show season. I'm on back-to-back shows and Monday was my only down day. So <laughs> here we are. Fair, committed. Fair enough. The, the schedule this summer is just um, basically when can we survive and when do we have the brief moments of time to, to do it? Pretty much. You know? Like, Pretty it's much. like when do you have enough downtime and energy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, re- the routine returns in like September, I don't know, mid-September. Mid-September. Usually. Mid-September, we'll be back on track. But, you know, summertime, lots is going on. And then for, I mean, the fall and the winter, at least in my case, I don't do very much. So I got to pack it in while I can. There you go. We're, we'll just be spontaneous for the next few months. Yes. Yes. With our schedule. But one thing that will always happen is you will have an episode on Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. I'm going to blow it next week. That was FYI. <laughs> FYI, there's going to be no episode. <laughs> I just jinxed us. <laughs> <laughs> our perfect attendance uh, record no see we'll just put up like um, five minutes of just being like all right hi good night thank you <laughs> still counts because then it's still there <laughs> <laughs> uh all right but how are you doing i'm doing all right i'm doing all right i'm a little, little tired but you know i'll i'll manage i'll get through the rest of the week i am having a lovely rose tea this evening Nice, nice. Yeah. Bringing that back. Yes. Bringing that back. Yep. Yeah. Nice, calming. So that's why I brought it out. Good. What are you drinking? I have my Don't Worry, Be Happy herbal tea. Oh, you're also going for the chill vibes. I love it. Yeah. I love yeah. it. No, it's good. Good. It's good. I did, um, I have taken up a rather intense cardio workout on Mondays. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, that involves cycling, which is not usually my thing. <laughs> father-daughter and bonding it, time. <laughs> it is father-daughter bonding time. And, you know, it's not like, you know, it is kind of fun um, that our bonding session as father-daughter is to just like get super competitive but not actually talk to each other <laughs> that much. Like we're just kind of like cycling, cycling, cycling. Somebody gets the little like first place badge and I'm just like, huh. <laughs> and that's our talking. And then you so. both crawl out on your hands and knees. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you, I am tabled every night afterwards. So, you know, but I, I just take that, that that's a good workout. I have been looking for something like cardio wise that I enjoy that also has been challenging me. So I think I found it. Oh, perfect. How's the seat treating you it. though? It's all right because I got um, cycling shorts. Okay, good. Good, because I yes. did an impromptu spin class a couple months ago with yeah. a friend, and ooh, it was not good. It was not good. Let me because I'm also super competitive, you, so like I just pedaled yeah. my little heart out. Yeah, but oh, the the pants I was wearing were not suitable for nope. cycling, and oof, I was yeah. Angry. Let me tell you, the first session I did, I didn't have those bike shorts. So I just had, you know, like these little like TNA Aritzia bike shorts that they're like, they're bike shorts, but they're just, they're not, you know, like no. they're like no. running shorts yeah. basically. And I go in and I'm like, I'm ready to go. And I'm pretty sure I bruised my sit bones for like a week. Yeah. Like I struggled to sit yeah. because like it was just too much for me. So yeah. if you're going to take up spin class and get, get some proper bike shorts, uh, your butt will thank you. They're worth the investment. Mm-hmm. They're worth the investment. But yeah, anyway, so this episode is not about fitness at all, no. but thank you for <laughs> thank you for indulging me. I appreciate it. We're actually going to be talking about gift giving in all types of relationships, from friendships, romantic relationships, and within family. Yes, and this is uh, not one particular occasion either. This is like mm-hmm. birthdays, holidays, Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever kind of uh, gift giving occasion that might occur. Because, Mm -hmm. um, you know, these are some really intimate relationships that we might have with people. And 
you know, it can get kind of awkward if there's not a discussion on mm-hmm. whether, um, okay, I don't want to say like gifts are be to be expected because there's a couple different layers to this. Some people yeah. might be expecting a gift, which is kind of weird, I find. I, I think that's not really don't the best. Started. Don't be like that. Don't be that person who just expects. Don't, like it. don't get me started. Yeah, like don't be the person who expects to get things from other people. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's like, okay, how big of a gift? You know, is it just like mm-hmm. a little something or is it like a big gift? And then with that comes like the price, you know, are we spending less than $20 mm-hmm. or are we all spending over $100? Um, Mm -hmm. this can be just such a hard thing. And I feel like it's, it's super awkward. I find for most people in their like early twenties, I feel like that's the hardest range for this Mm -hmm. to come in. Um, just because like when we're young, you know, we don't really have money to buy gifts. And then when we're teenagers, we kind of all have limited money and we'll get each other gifts, but they're usually like pretty cheap. I'm pretty sure my mom bought all of her Christmas gifts from me for <laughs> just my entire teenage yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She just I was just like, Mom, I need to buy you a Christmas gift. And she was just like, okay. She's like, I would love bucks. this. Thank you so much for getting it for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think too, it can get really awkward. Um, like even from like aside from finances, just about like picking the right thing Mm -hmm. and not hurting each other's feelings because like I've definitely given somebody a gift that I could tell they didn't like and people have definitely given me one that I wasn't really into yeah and I feel like that can be such a touchy thing because it's just like you know there's nothing like more obvious than I think like faked enthusiasm you know and then you just kind of feel like icky about it And then, you know, the way that some people solve that is they, like, give the list and such. But then that also creates the feeling of, like, am I just doing this person's shopping? Well, it also kind of feels – It, takes away the creativity. Yeah, yeah. Like, I actually – I love buying gifts for people. Um, Yeah, I do too. Like, either I go with, like, a a great feeling or there's, like, something in my mind where I'm like, okay, I know this person would love that. Yeah. but yeah, I can I can definitely understand where you'd feel that like awkwardness um, mm-hmm. when maybe it's something they didn't want or you didn't want. And at that point, it's just like, well, why did we even buy each other gifts? Yeah. I feel like that can come in though like a lot with like not so much friends because I, I don't know. I feel like when I buy gifts and I know you're the same, it's usually for people you're fairly close to right. and you know super well. But you know, when you kind of get into that family stuff and that extended family, you know, as you're learning what the expectations are for gift giving. Yeah. It like kind of comes up a lot when there kind of is an expectation for you to buy a gift, but you don't know that person really well. And you're just like, here's a candle because it's the safest thing I could think of. Yeah. That's kind of when you like default to things, right? Like here is a gift set of body wash, Mm -hmm. you know? Ole. Ole. Ole gift set. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like it's just – it's a wonderful thing. I adore gift giving. I definitely can go a bit um, too far sometimes if not given a particular budget. But yeah, I feel like there's just – there's an art to gift giving and there's also an art to the conversations around it to make sure that everybody feels comfortable with – what we're setting out to do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So let's kind of start off with friends because I feel like yes. this is something where a lot of people maybe struggle with when when they're younger, uh, mm-hmm. just having those conversations and setting boundaries about gift giving. Uh, mm-hmm. So Rachel, what's kind of like your experience with that? Like through, through maybe like your te- late teen years and, and 20s, like it, or what's the difference that you're finding? Okay. So I think, um, you know, when I was probably later high school, I did give gifts to some of my school friends because like they were super small. Like I think I bought somebody like a hair, like a set of hairpins or something one time. So that was kind of my experience there. Um, and I have two experiences to pull from actually three. So one of them was at university where I did, you know, kind of want to give 
friends gifts, but you know, we all didn't have that much money. So we kind of banded together and one of us each year would put on like a secret Santa kind of thing. So then instead of having to get something for everybody, it was like a $25 gift for one person, but then everybody in your friend group gets something. So I I do, I did like that idea and you know, it kind of with secret Santa, it's like a fun thing. So you don't really need to have a conversation around it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of like people know the rules The other experience, and I know that you can touch on this a bit too, was within our friendship and our friend group at the time. I think probably like we had this conversation six years ago. Uh, Yeah, probably seven years ago. Yeah, where we had for the first, I think, two or three years, we had been getting each other presents Mm -hmm. for Christmas, not so much birthdays. I don't think there was much, I don't remember anything with birthdays. Like the odd birthday thing yeah that'd be more like okay let's go out and like I'll take you for dinner kind of thing yeah yeah I think that was more what it was and then just one year I think you and I sat down and we just had that conversation with each other we were just like this is not like I'm just like do you really want to exchange gifts this year like I'm kind of in this situation financially and you were like I'm kind of in this situation financially so we're like let's just go for dinner yeah instead. And that's great because, you know, then we have that memory of that dinner. And then another experience I had is with a friend of mine um, more recently into my early 20s as I did not have a lot of expendable income, but a bit more where each year we just check in with each other Mm -hmm. and we say, hey, how are you feeling about gifts this year? She's usually like, yep, loves gifts. She like is into it. Um, And like, and that's Christmas and birthdays. Yeah. Uh, that we do that. And then we just set the budget for the year. And I find um, to leave some room for creativity as well, we more give like categories of what we would like as opposed to me being like, okay, hair mask, I want this specific one. I'm like, oh, like I would like something like a new hair mask and here's a couple that I'm interested in. I like that you because know? it kind of gives you a little bit of a guide, like the buyer is getting a guide But there's Mm -hmm. still room for creativity because if you just say hair mask, I mean, there's hundreds if not thousands of different things out there that you probably haven't even tried. So Mm -hmm. that could be a really great opportunity for you to get something that is completely out of the box but Mm -hmm. still exactly what you wanted. Exactly. And I think another thing too for like categories and stuff if you like reading is books Mm -hmm. and just say I like fiction books in this – these few genres then somebody can go out and pick one out for you and I think that's really nice because then it's like there is that extra creativity and thought that goes into it beyond just going in and being like okay she wanted that pick it up let's go yeah yeah exactly or just getting you like I have nothing against like gift cards by any means gift cards are fantastic yeah yeah like I I know some people are like oh I hate gift cards like there's no creative thought to that but you know, that is still within the realm of like, hey, I really want a book. Um, here's a gift card. Go pick out whatever, whatever book mm-hmm. you want, right? I think that's, yes. you know, definitely a good option, especially if you don't know the person that well, but like you kind of have an idea. I think that's, yeah. uh, that's a good choice still. So like don't don't knock gift cards. Yeah. Or if you really just like don't know what they would like. Yeah. It's a safe bet. Um, but what's your experience been with it? throughout your kind of teens, early 20s? Uh, yeah, so definitely in my friend groups, there were the gift-giving moments. And especially within like our friend group, that was definitely the one where we kind of had this like at first unspoken word of like we're getting Christmas gifts and like sometimes birthday gifts. And yep. then it really came down to like some years we're like, okay, you know what? We need to break the ice Mm -hmm. here and just admit that we can't afford this shit because we were all in school and like barely working. So we really didn't Mm -hmm. have that like extra. So if you, we, I don't know, there's like four of us in the group and you spent like $50 each, that's $150 that we probably didn't Mm -hmm. have um, definitely around the holidays because like there was still like family gifts to buy and, you know, so on. Um, Mm -hmm. so I think that was, I still remember that moment that we all kind of sat down and agreed to be like, you know what, let's, 
let's not do gift giving. Or there was that uh, couple of years that we did, it has to be handmade. And yes. I think we all went to the dollar store. That was the year of the uh, peppermint mm-hmm. food coloring dyed uh, bath salt yes. <laughs> that I gave everyone. <laughs> My eyes were watering hard with that oh my God. <laughs> because <laughs> from the peppermint content, you know what? peppermint extract. You know that that's a full bottle for one for one jar. That seems legit. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you yeah, know, but, I mean, it was great. I felt so clean, right? and just cleansed. Yeah, like that was. I actually had more fun doing the homemade gifts because, like, okay, so there was like soap. We had a friend who did some uh, scarf knittings. Um, I know I made like personalized mugs one year. I went to the dollar store and got everyone like a big cappuccino mug. And then I wrote a quote on there with like the, um, permanent oven bake marker of like a quote that made me think of them. And most of those people still have those mugs. Um, I know yours got washed, Rachel, but like, that's okay. No, no, that wasn't your fault. It was a roommate who did that. I was so upset. And you know what you wrote on the bottom? Do not wash this thing. I know. And they still they still washed, washed it. it. It's okay. I'm pretty sure by now all of those mugs have probably lost their their quote. But you know what that means? I just get to write a new quote on them of my updated thought on you guys. So it's the gift that I keeps like on that giving. <laughs> it does. Oh my god! I think like one day when we're like, okay, it's gift giving time again. We're bringing just back be the like, mugs. everyone, give me your mugs. Oh my god! <laughs> I think we should just have a mug exchange. We all get like yes. the same dollar store mug and we get our little Sharpies and we just take turns writing things on the mug and then we all have a personalized mug. I think that's a great idea. I love There's it. There's a gift opportunity, guys. Remember that. That um, is. Yeah. So People love mugs. I use them every day. Exactly. Me too. Huge exactly. tea drinker and coffee drinker. Um, so yeah, that was kind of like the transition to when we were like acknowledging that we were on limited budgets, but still getting each other Mm -hmm. gifts. And then, Mm -hmm. like you said, in the past, like five, six years, we then just kind of decided, you know what, let's just cut the gifts, you know, like let's, I'd rather just, you know, take you out for your birthday or like, let's, let's all make dinner together around the holidays um it Mm -hmm. became more about like let's just spend time right especially once we were out of school and in our busy work lives that was way more valuable and meaningful than Mm -hmm. giving a present um so that was something but you know it it was kind of hard though back when we were younger because we all wanted to bring it up but Mm -hmm. no one wanted to admit that it was a struggle. Um, yeah. But really, after we had this conversation and realized everyone was in the same boat, mm-hmm. it was like, wow, we all like we all feel closer now because we have this understanding that you know, no one is expecting anything from anyone, and for sure. I think it's good for friendships. So if you are younger and you know in that feeling of you know you're worried that your friends are going to judge you at all. Um, chances are like most of them are in the same situation as you and Mm -hmm. if they do judge you because you're not going to buy them a present um, I'm sorry but you need to get new friends that's just not cool exactly exactly and I think too an important thing to remember is that at least around the holidays and a bit with birthdays as well it is kind of like a cultural expectation that we were brought up with that when it's somebody's birthday or it's Christmas time or I don't know, even Easter, I used to get some gifts from family that gift giving is a thing. And a lot of that is like, you know, when you get around Christmas, all the commercials on TV or all the radio commercials, everything is and all the Christmas songs are about giving presents, right? So part of it is it's like, you know, like you said earlier, we went into our kind of big friend group gatherings around the holidays just with the expectation of like oh it's christmas time we buy each other gifts we didn't originally have those conversations like we didn't have that initial are we gonna buy each other presents this year when it first happened Mm -hmm. and i think it's just an important thing to remember that that's just something that we were that was ingrained in us throughout life and it's okay to set a new standard yeah and say okay for this for this year, it's a no from me. And then maybe you check in again the next year and say, okay, this year it's a no from me. Maybe five years will pass 
and I'll like see something that I think of you when I see it and I'll be like, hey, I found something really great. Are you comfortable if I get you this gift this year? Yeah. And then if you are, then that's great. Yeah. No, I think that's important to to note because it doesn't have to be the standard for like ever and ever now you never get each other gifts. Like it could mm-hmm. just be, you know, hey, both of us had a, a really tough year and we just can't do it this year, but like I really want to get you something next year. That's really mm-hmm. fine too. You know, it's all about the communication and having that conversation of what are we both doing and what are we both comfortable with? Exactly. 100%. Yes. All right. Do you have anything else about friends or are we going to move on to family? I am ready for family because family is hard. <laughs> yes. All right. Before yeah. you go into yours, because you've got the juicy story. I don't yes. really have a juicy story, but I will kind of explain my family uh, traditions kind of around the holidays. So when I was younger, like my cousins and I, we were all younger kids. Um, I don't remember what the adults did. They might have gotten like, like my mom might have gotten each one of her siblings a present. I think she did. And then obviously Mm -hmm. my grandparents. And then she also bought for like all the cousins. That is a lot of freaking presents. And like, I, I'm like, wow, mom, that's, that's a lot of money that you probably didn't need to spend. And it was actually kind of hard because, you know, we would have to think really hard about what to get my cousins because, you know, yes, I saw them, but, um, you know, it's not like we knew intimately, okay, do they already have something like this? And when we got into like the preteens, well, we're not going to buy them toys anymore. Like toys were easy, right? Mm -hmm. When you're kids, you get them a Barbie doll and they're like, yay, this is great. Um, but as preteens then it kind of became clothing. So we lived in a small town that didn't have a mall. So it became really difficult to, you know, find the trendy stores, um, that, you know, all the, the young preteens were, were shopping at in those days. So, you know, we would have to like drive to a bigger city to do all of our Christmas shopping. So it became like a lot of work. And then, um, Mm -hmm my family kind of decided that, you know, everyone's getting a little bit older. This is becoming a lot to buy for like 15 people at minimum. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do a form of secret Santa instead? Kind of like your situation. Um, But what we do, and I'm pretty sure there is an actual name for this, so I'm just calling it secret Santa, is we all draw numbers from a hat and everyone buys a gift. It kind of has to be like age neutral and um, a bit gender neutral okay. as well. And everyone draws mm-hmm. a number. The per- person with the lowest number, like number one, picks first. And then number two can steal. And like the best number to have is the last one because you can steal anyone's gift or open a new present. And that just became so much more fun. We love doing that every year because it's always like a, a big competition of like who's going to steal from who and who's getting like what. So that really adds an element of fun to it. And then usually like most people leave with a gift that they're happy with. And, you know, if not, like, you know, there's some swaps going on after the the game. So Mm -hmm. if you're in a family situation and there's just way too many people, do that instead because it's so much easier and way cheaper. You know, we all had a limit, I think, of like $50. Um, Mm -hmm. And that was way more economical than buying like 15 presents at I don't even know what price. Yeah, I agree. We've we've done that before too. And um, I I think we only did one year of it. And do you want to know what my dear mother thought was a great idea to put into the gift circulation? Oh, God, what? Uh, One was a box of condoms. (laughs) And the other was a pair of his and hers underwear. One of them was – the pair of boxers and a little like teddy, <laughs> like you know, like the little lace. Yep, yeah. actually, no, that was at um, the the lace teddy was actually at a work Christmas party. Oh my gosh! Well, actually, okay, during that, I'm the I'm condoms was at the family version. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of did something similar one year. I did like a Victoria's Secret. I think it was like more. I stuck to the the body washes and. Mm -hmm. and everything that they used to sell. But I did throw like a red thong in there too. And it was my grandfather (laughs) who opened that present. Oh my God. It was 
it was funny. I thought it was funny. He didn't think it was that funny. Um, and one of my aunts swapped with him. <laughs> nice. Yep. See, um, this was uh, this was a long time ago um, before I met my current partner, and I had somebody with me at Christmas, and um, he got the box of condoms <laughs> in front of my dad, Ooh. and I don't think my dad was having fun anymore. Oh my god, yeah, he would stop laughing real quick. Um, but that's kind yes. of the fun of that game. Like, it can be awkward, but it's kind of fun to have like a gag gift mm-hmm. in the mix as well. Um, mm-hmm. and the good thing is like, I know, uh, my mom would always get like one extra present just in case someone else had showed up to, to Christmas and didn't know about this game that we play. Um, mm-hmm. then there was like always an extra, extra gift. So, you know, if there was a gag prize in there, there was always like a backup present. <laughs> good, good. Well, yeah, I, um, had similar experiences, experience as you growing up. I don't think we ever bought presents for the cousins I know that like my parents would buy presents for like my aunt and uncles and like we could usually expect something for me and my two brothers like a group gift Mm -hmm. from a family member but it wouldn't be like for each of us I think I did I did have one aunt and uncle that did but it was always like sweaters or something which you know when you're like eight years old you're like clothes what (laughs) heaven forbid (laughs) So moving from that, like we kind of still maintain the same thing with my immediate family. Like we do get each other um, a couple gifts every year and my mom still does like a little stockings thing. But like I've never bought gifts for extended families. And what I kind of want to talk about is just there's some awkwardness with getting used to how uh, your partner's family does gifts. Yes, it definitely takes a yeah. couple of years of observation. Um, I'll let you go off. And then, sorry, I never kind of explained my immediate family Christmas. Um, my dad, like, hates it when people get him gifts. So even though we mm-hmm. always, like, try and get him something, he's like, don't get me anything. Um, yeah. So I know some years, like, I've gotten him windshield washer fluid because I try to get <laughs> That's my dad. He's just like, thank you. I needed that. But like he hates when his children spend money on him. Yeah. So it's taken us a few years to like not do that. Um, yeah, you get used to, to that. To him, he's more just like, let's all just have dinner together. He's like, I just want to see you guys. I don't want you guys to get me anything. He's like, save your pennies. You know, don't don't spend it on me. Um, so that's kind yes. of my dad. And then on my mom's side with her partner, we do like more a traditional – gift exchange. My mom, you know, does the stockings and everything. Um, Mm -hmm. I usually get like one like main gift. That's Mm kind of like a a quote unquote bigger gift. Um, Yeah, we're the same. Yeah, it kind of depends on the year, you know, how my finances are going. As I've become, you know, higher up in my job, I can kind of do that without like, you know, dying inside. Um, And then I get like a bunch of like little things you know like toiletries and 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 smaller Mm -hmm. stuff kind of as stocking stuffers so yeah sorry that that's my like intermediate family continue with the significant other yeah so significant others it's it's funny because you know everyone's family does things differently like there are some families where they've completely like let go of the gift giving thing Mm -hmm. entirely at birthdays and holidays like they're just like okay we're all past that point until like I don't know grandkids start arriving again yeah yeah I feel like there's always kind of a lull in families like when there's no children Mm -hmm. um the gift giving gets like a little lax and then when there's a kid involved like I remember when um my cousin had uh his son and it became very exciting again you know like when there's a baby around the tree that's when it's fun like it's fun to shop for for a kid yeah because especially like they get so excited too. Like it's so cute. So yeah, like Christmas with a partner's family for the first time is often a learning experience because you really don't know what it's going to be like until you experience it for the first time or maybe even the first couple times. Because, you know, for me, I kind of went into the most recent Christmas being like, oh, they must do things exactly like my family, right? Which at a period of time, I would just give like parents something or whatever. Right. 
And then I got to Christmas and they do a lot of gifts and everybody gets somebody something, right? Which I, I do think is very nice. But the worst thing is, is that I forgot to get somebody something because well, it just, it didn't yeah, cross and it's, my it's mind. Yeah, it's kind of hard because like you don't know who's showing up. Like, no. Like it's not like you get the guest list to going to a family Christmas that you're not hosting. Yes. So, you know, like I said earlier, I grew up where you just gave gifts to like your immediate family and I never gave anything to extended family. And that's a bit different with my partner's family where they get somebody everything. And I had forgotten to get somebody a gift and they gave me two. Awkward. And I, <laughs> I, I was mortified I was so upset and you know like I kind of put it on myself afterwards where I'm just like okay well you know like I'm gonna go out and get you something anyway which I'm sure I didn't really like have to do but I think just in that moment where you can tell like they're not gonna like say something and be like you're an asshole but you can tell like they're probably a little bit disappointed about it so I did go out and do it um but then like it just kind of it made it a bit less fun. Yeah, it was just like, here you go, two days later. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, you know, it's like most of it, why it was like a bit less fun was because I was just like, oh, now this is just awkward. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? Because now I'm just like, here is a symbol of me not doing my due diligence. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like for the first so, Christmas, like that's definitely a pass. I for think you so. Because and like, how do you know? This is the first Christmas you've ever gone exactly. to. Um exactly. but now like I guess you know for for next year. So you are you just now like accounting for having to get like extended family gift on his side? Or are you like is there gonna be a conversation of saying, you know, am I expected to get a gift for everyone or like am I allowed to kind of sit this out like you know um I think there isn't an expectation that it has to be like anything big right and stuff so I think like I would probably never do it again and moving forward I would make sure I have like a little something for everybody right just because I'm like I think that's you know like that's the energy of what I'm coming into and you know like I think like my partner does a good job but also understanding the energy of what he is coming into at like our holidays mm -hmm. and such so I think it's um yeah like it's just a lesson it's just a lesson learned and you know I think I've learned moving forward that if I'm ever going to somebody's Christmas who I haven't been to before I will ask ahead of time yeah no I think that is good yeah. because like just for you know whoever's get together you're going to who knows what what the expectation yeah. is. So I think there's nothing wrong with asking that. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, also I don't want to just focus. I know we're focusing so much on the holidays here and it's like June. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but th I think the same goes for birthdays as well. Yeah. Like I, there's nothing wrong with asking, you know, Oh, like our, our gifts expected. Um, mm -hmm. you know, put the feelers out. You don't have to like ask the person directly whose birthday it might be, but, yeah. Maybe some friends just say like, hey, are you getting so-and-so a gift? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, go from there because you definitely, like, especially the emotions that you're describing here, you don't want to feel like you kind of arrive and you're just like, oh, shit, I look like you just kind of shit person. on that one. <laughs> yeah, like oh, I look like the Grinch over here. We don't want that yeah. at all. And it is yeah. something that is avoidable as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so like on my partner's, side um I've been around for a few Christmases now and in terms of like birthdays for his siblings like I personally don't get them a gift but he does that's just something yeah. they do like and I don't expect them to get me a present um mm -hmm. I do get a gift for his mother for her birthday and you know she's always gotten me one for mine and then same with Christmas you know um it's kind of one gift each and yep. this year was kind of a, a unique year because like everyone kind of has a partner now yeah. and um, we kind of uh, depended on, on, on which sibling, but like for, I kind of bought like presents for all the girlfriends and then mm -hmm. he got the presents for his brothers. 
And then for That's some of them, idea. you know, it's just like, well, we got them like group gifts, right? Like something they can enjoy together. Mm-hmm. And like, that's what we kind of got in return. It was like, okay, here's something for the both, like both of you. So now, you know, we're not buying, you know, six to eight gifts. We're buying like three to four, which makes it a lot better. Exactly. Yeah. And we've kind of done, um, we've started doing it, uh, the thing where in my family too, we're all kind of partnered up now where we do buy everyone something, Mm -hmm. but you know, my brother and his girlfriend will buy me something and my boyfriend something and me and my boyfriend will buy my brother's girlfriend something and my brother something. Yeah. So it's like, it's, you know, it's coming from both parties. Yeah. So like that's the same situation we have here. Like, it's not like, okay, I'm getting like, they don't have to get me a gift personally. Like it, it's just like from them to us and vice versa. Yeah, I think I think that's the way to go, uh, especially just like, yeah, like as we get older and stuff and as we, I don't know, it doesn't feel like it right now, but have a bit more disposable income, a lot of things like we just get for ourselves. So it's like, you know, a cute thing that we got this year um, at Christmas time was like two mugs that have our initials on it. I love that. And I'm like, that's awesome. You know what? Like you said, people should buy more mugs. You know what? You can never have too many mugs, right? You can't. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. So my advice for the family thing, especially when it comes to significant other family gatherings, um, mm-hmm. talk to your partner, right? Like yep. ask. Like you should be able to ask them, okay, what is the expectation here? How do you do things? Because – you don't want anyone to feel bad. Like, oh my God, I'd feel like so awful if I showed up somewhere and everyone got me a gift and I didn't get anything. Oh my God, I would feel like such a loser. Um, yeah. But if you don't know, like if no one tells you and you don't ask, then um, I feel like it's just the inevitable. So don't yeah. be afraid to just ask someone. There's nothing wrong Definitely. with that. And in most situations, especially when it's your first year, if you kind of you know, mess that up a little bit, most of the people will be understanding. Yeah, I think so. Like definitely for yeah. your first Christmas or, or birthday that you're attending, it's it's fine, you know? Like yeah. I don't think any yeah. – no one should hold a grudge against you. If they do, okay, there's something there's something on them. Um, mm-hmm. Although maybe if they got you like a really awesome birthday present and you didn't get them anything and it was like after – Okay, maybe shame on you. Um, yeah, there's so many ways to look at this. I find like it's so complicated. Mm-hmm. Just simple gift giving, and the thing is, like everyone's family traditions are different, right? Like mm-hmm. a lot of families don't do gift giving at all. Mm-hmm. So you know, you don't want to show up somewhere with all these presents, and and then mm-hmm. they're gonna feel awkward, right? Like so, I think the important thing is just talking about it. Yeah. And, like, honestly, if you really don't know and you're about to go to, like, this big gathering and you're just, like, I don't know if this person – if I need to get this person something, even just, like, something little yeah, can go a long way if if you're not sure, you know? Everyone, like we said, loves a mug, loves a candle. Loves a gift card. Yep. And then as you get to know them better, too, then, like, over time, if it does turn out that giving gifts to everybody or whoever is, like, kind of – you know, it's a tradition mm-hmm. that you're coming into, then you can start to get more personalized stuff as the years go on and you get to know them better, right? Oh, for sure. Like my um, track record of gifts to my my partner's family has definitely honed in a lot more. Like I went from very safe generic things to now that like I know them better. I know like I'm just like, you know what? They would love that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it, it can be a little bit more creative and fun. And then you kind of get excited to to find something for them. Yes. Yes. And I just before we jump off of family, like I just want to touch on like the budget thing yes. a bit here because, you know, we talked about this earlier, but me and my family, we've kind of transitioned away from, you know, like when you were a kid, you would get like, I don't know, like five Barbies or something. And you were like, awesome. But that was maybe like, I don't know, a hundred bucks yeah. then where as you get older and stuff, the things that, you know, you kind of start to want are a bit more expensive. Mm-hmm. So definitely like it's kind of become a bit of a thing that with our family we just kind of each get one thing and it might be a bit bigger. Yeah. 
you know, but you know, there's also like some beauty in just like buying some small, unique presents that are like suited to that person that don't break the bank. Yeah, absolutely. And I kind of told my family, um, especially when I was in school, I said like, look, I don't have money for Christmas presents. And they're like, that's fine. Don't get us anything. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I went to Walmart and got some like pictures printed and some dollar store frames of just some really nice pictures of like, you know, the family pets and and mm-hmm. them and that kind of stuff. And they loved that so much. And it's still, you know, up on the wall. So it doesn't have it. to be expensive to be a good gift. I think I appreciate more thoughtful things over more mm-hmm. expensive things. Like, let's face it, people, most of us don't want for anything. Like we live in a day and age where we don't have to wait for our birthday or Christmas to get the things we want. Like most of us just kind of go out and get it. Um, mm-hmm. So I love. I mean, hell, with these like installment plans now, oh, you my- could get like yeah, because I've been looking into it. You could get a computer and just pay a hundred dollars a month for a year. I know, interest free. Like it's so easy for us to buy things now. And like before, like maybe you were waiting all year for your birthday to get a computer, or at least like help with buying a computer. Where now, like mm-hmm. it's just so easy for us. And I don't know, maybe that's just our age that we just go out and get things that we need. So personally, mm-hmm. I love really personal gifts. Like I, yes. I just love that. And like those are the things that I really remember and, mm-hmm. and I keep them, you know. All right. Shall we discuss romantic relationships? Um, yes. I yes. am all over the place. Oh, my God. You are, one. girl. My God. Yeah. How do we want to start this one? Because I, I definitely remember, you know, the new relationship, the first birthday, the first anniversary, the first Christmas. Yeah. You go a little crazy because you're so excited. You especially, like you're on a whole other level, which I love you for. (laughs) But thank you. Settle down, girl. Thank you. Now that you're out of the one year phase, you're like done. Yeah, I'm just like, here's a chocolate bar. Yeah, right. Here's some Skittles. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So my experience, can I start first? Sure. You go for it. So my experience with uh, relationships and gift giving I've been um, had really two drastic sides of the spectrum. In my first relationship, um, I don't think I really got anything around birthdays, which which was all right. Um, but I was also like 19, so I was kind of stomped my foot a bit more because I was like, I want stuff. I, I like to think I'm not as much like that now, but definitely I fell into that at that age. But before I move out of this relationship, one really important thing I want to make, a uh, point I want to make is, um, guys... Unless you've really thought about it and talked about it, don't buy your significant other a pet. <laughs> I was waiting for that story. For a birthday or for a holiday because that pet stays with you for a while. That's how you and end up with a rabbit. <laughs> yes. And don't get me wrong. I love my rabbit. He has been with me through so much and I'm so happy in that I have him and so he's been honestly such a gift but just me saying it would be really fun to have a rabbit and kind of not shutting up about that for a while um don't go get me a rabbit (laughs) because I was 19 and I did not have concept that that rabbit was a lot of responsibility for me at 19 and um you know he's he he has a new stepfather now (laughs) oh my god (laughs) So what I mean by have the conversation is be like, all right, let's really talk this out. How is this pet going to impact our lives? Whose pet is it? If this um, relationship ended, who takes the pet with them? How would we handle that? And just having those realistic conversations, just because, you know, it's a living thing. It's a living creature. And, you know, they deserve to come into a home that's prepared for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like a puppy is a big one. Yes. Like I know cat, cats and dogs are yes. probably like the big ones that people get as like a present um, for a significant other. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, like let's say this relationship breaks down. There are like legit police reports and custody battles over dogs. You know, it's like crazy. Or, or sometimes, you know, the person had – 
like had the dog and then they wanted to leave and then they left it with the partner mm-hmm. who didn't want the dog, you know, and that's not fair to animals. That's really not fair to them. So yeah, I'm with you hundred percent. Do not get your partner a pet unless this was a previous discussion and a choice that you were doing this together. This should mm-hmm. not be like a surprise because yes. you are not only, you know, straddling someone with a huge res- responsibility and financial burden, mm-hmm. um, you're putting a, a living, breathing creature potentially in harm's mm-hmm. way if if anything happens at the relationship. Like, honestly, it's like the same as having a kid, right? Like, it like is. almost the same level of discussion needs to go into this. Like, this is yeah. how our world is right now just because so many people have fur babies. Um, mm mm-hmm. It gets messy if if a relationship yeah. breaks down. So caution, people, caution. My boyfriend also got me a pet. However, people, it was a betta fish. Okay, I remember this. Do you remember that him? That little fish. That was I do. Little Fargo. Um, he was my little betta fish that I I had in my apartment. And you know what? He was super low low maintenance. So like that was he was chill. That was that was I think that was the first Christmas present. I got from him and uh so a fish a fish is okay guys like especially if it's a little betta fish it has a little fish bowl that's Mm -hmm. that's a pretty safe one but like when you get into pets that have a lot longer of a lifespan and more responsibility hard stop on that one okay like my fish lived for about a year and a half to two years i miss Mm -hmm. him dearly but he was a fish (laughs) you know yeah, and I think too, like, um, because like you know, cats and dogs are the big one, but like I think um, small animal welfare. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've noticed it becoming more of a thing over the last couple years, and that's like you know, rabbits, guinea pigs, yes. hamsters, and such. Any little creature that you're bringing in, just make sure that like you've done your research and you have like I don't know, talked about what happens if you break up. All of these things. And yeah, just make sure that you're ready for it. And also now I'm just getting off track and being like, let's talk about doing things in the best interest of your pets. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, like rabbits are <laughs> a lot of responsibility. You know, it's like mm-hmm. the equivalent of a, of a cat, if not maybe a bit more, um, mm-hmm. just because like they're in- independent, but like they still need a lot more care than you can think about. And I feel like this is a good insert for Easter, you know, because so many people, I always see every Easter now I see like a a PSA saying, you know, don't get your children rabbits for Easter. And I think some pet shops like will not sell rabbits around Easter because so many are getting purchased and then they're literally being like released into the wild where they cannot survive Mm -hmm. because like they're domesticated or they're being like surrendered to pet Mm -hmm. shelters and it's just it's awful and I just I have no patience for anything like that so yeah do not get your partner a living breathing thing let's just put it that let's just do that love how serious we're being about bunny welfare oh my god it's important any type of animal there is there needs to be welfare for them there does there does (laughs) there does good (laughs) good statement (laughs) Yes, we need to we need to think about that. Um, but yeah, and um, so needless to say, that's what was was my first experience. Uh, but yeah, my in my current one, I think we need to rein it in after the first year um, because we set a budget for birthdays and Christmases. Um, the budget left the window, yep. which is fine because I think like in the first. Um, year like we were both really excited because we both love the holidays and love gift giving so we had a lot of fun with that of kind of like we kind of um wanted to recreate like the nostalgia yeah of what we grew up with of like that kind of Christmas morning thing and like with birthdays we were like let's just do some really nice things for each other so like for me like I took him um on like a short little trip together uh, for his birthday and for me he like scheduled something for over like the course of a week like each day either like he would get me a little gift or like we would do something fun like one day he sent you me and my mom to like the spa yeah so I think um like those those were great experiences because it 
you know, kind of fed into that nostalgia factor. But also like we did have a conversation afterward where we were like, okay, maybe this year for birthdays, we just like, you know, go for dinner and maybe for Christmas next year, we just get each other one thing and have started to have those conversations of just what the expectations moving forward are. And, you know, like we said earlier about friendships, like dependent on the year, those standards and expectations can change, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely depends on the year. And in my situation, like we've always kind of gotten each other like one thing or, you know, a couple of of smaller things for for the holidays I always get him like a new white t-shirt and underwear and then I get him a present um Love it. more for my own sanity you know and then I can get rid of his ones with stains and holes um those white t-shirts can start to look real oh every year every year I think I toss out <laughs> the one I bought him the year before so you know it just just got to keep them fresh you know yes. um so that's something we do and then um uh, you know, there are some years we get each other bigger gifts, but there's definitely that pressure of just like, oh my God, you got me a big gift. And now like, mm-hmm. I feel like I need to match that. Um, yeah. So it is hard. And like, we don't have any expectation of each other. Like we, we don't try to outdo each other. Um, we're pretty chill about that kind of stuff, but like, I did have a milestone birthday this year, so I did get a pretty big present from him. And COVID kind of stole his milestone birthday, so, like, I kind of want to do something special for him this year. But mm-hmm. I'm kind of thinking that, you know, going forward, uh, maybe we'll have that discussion of, like, okay, you know what, let's not get each other individual things for for birthdays and Christmas like, why don't we do – we plan one big thing for the whole year and yeah. that's that's our gift to each other. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, I would much rather, like, go have an experience mm-hmm. that, like, maybe we share the cost on. I would love that more than, like, getting something materialistic. For so sure. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like, for the past few years, we've always just done, like, a gift or a thing. Um mm-hmm. But now that we're older, like, and he's he's so hard to buy for because, like, if he wants something, he'll just get it. So yeah. it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you're like, oh, I could get you that, and you're like, oh, you just bought it. Okay, um, take that off the list. Never then. mind. Never Back mind. To the drawing board. Yeah. So that's where now I'm just like, you know what? Why don't we go do an experience? Because like, I know you haven't done that, and that would be fun to do together. So I think mm-hmm. like. This year going forward, that's probably what we're going to be doing. But again, that's a discussion, right? Like Mm -hmm. you want to be on the same page so no one gets their feelings hurt for Mm -hmm. not getting like 20 presents, you know? Yeah, and I think that's really important because I think moving forward and as we get older and get further into our relationships and such, like there does come a time where it's just like, Maybe instead of Christmas presents or birthday presents, you're like, let's buy some furniture to update the furniture in our house. Yeah. And that's actually what we kind of did our first Christmas living Mm -hmm. together is, you know, we were buying so much stuff and like splitting that cost. And we're just like, you know what? We bought ourselves dressers Mm -hmm. for Christmas. That's pretty good. (laughs) Yeah. I just think like as we get further into our relationships and as we get older and such, I think, you know, we can really buy ourselves a lot of the things that you know if our partner asks what would you want for Christmas it's like like you said I already bought it yeah it's like I don't need anything <laughs> yeah like it's just nice to plan on something together that moves you forward as a couple whether maybe you're going to a concert mm-hmm. that you really like or maybe you're taking a weekend in a cool city that you've never been to or maybe like you're putting some money aside for like a house heaven forbid that ever happens you know? Yeah. Like, I think it's nice. Like, there's something special, too, about just doing stuff that moves you forward together. Yeah, exactly. And just because we're on relationships here, I want to touch on Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Do you and your partner do anything for Valentine's Day? I know you just had, like, your first one, so I'm sure there was something. Listen, listen. <laughs> I said no to the gifts. Yes. Because we had a big Christmas and I was just like, let's just, you know. Valentine's Day isn't that far off of Christmas, you know, like that's just a few weeks. Like that's a lot of recovering to do financially. 
Yes, it's not. Um, but so like we did do dinner and like we were like, okay, let's have dinner. And I think we went um, skating. So it was, we d- had like a little date night, which was fun. But I said no gifts. Mm-hmm. And there was a box of turtles on my car and flowers delivered to me. And I was like, sir, that's a gift. That is a gift, sir. <laughs> so um, yeah, like I, I find uh, I'm not too like fussy about Valentine's Day. I'm kind of like It's pretty commercial and like I don't – I kind of feel the same way about anniversaries where I don't like being this defined day of like you need to love each other on this day. Oh, yeah. We don't do – like we acknowledge our anniversary but like it's kind of just a guesstimate. Mm -hmm. So we've claimed New Year's Day, (laughs) our our anniversary just because we're like we were kind of dating and kind of official around that time. So that's a good enough day. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I I think like my feelings towards Valentine's Day is just a lot of pressure um to i don't know fulfill some specified narrative of what valentine's day should be within your relationship so i don't really like it so i other than like you know the skating us going skating and having like a little dinner at home i don't really get that pumped up about it yeah same here our first valentine's day together um my boyfriend actually got us a couple's photo shoot which I recommend if you guys want to do something together for like whatever gift giving uh, occasion there is, go do a photo shoot together because actually as we've been recording this episode, I'm looking at the photo on my dresser of that photo Those shoot. Those are so cute. Yeah. And it like it, it, it was kind of pricey. Like, you know, it definitely was a couple hundred bucks and then you get to pick um, like some photos from that and I got a couple of them printed and mm-hmm. I don't know. I just – that was a fun day. Like I, I remember yeah. that day really well. And especially like we don't take a lot of pictures, either of us ever. <laughs> um, so it was kind of nice to have like a professional, uh, you know, space and have a professional mm-hmm. photographer tell us how to pose. Yeah. And like they just came out so cute. So I am all for doing things like that you guys can do together. Yeah, I really like that. Also, I have something like kind of funny to ask you. Sure. What are your thoughts on regifting things? <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've ever regifted anything. I've done it once. You have? Um, I've done it once and they did love it. Oh, so well, that's I don't good. Feel bad. You know, that's, I consider that upcycling, right? Exactly. I mean, it was also like, you know, like something that kind of got given to me. Uh, in a work sense yeah like I feel like that kind of stuff oh we didn't even touch on work gifts but you know that's yeah that's self-explanatory I think I think that follows a lot of like the friend things or like just do secret Santa you know Um, okay that actually is another mortifying moment of my life (laughs) where I actually did show up and I didn't have anything for anybody but I was working in a job where I showed up the last day before Christmas break our bosses um this was a few years ago were taking us out for lunch there was a bottle of wine on my desk from one coworker, like a, a Terry's chocolate orange or something on it from another one and like a little gift card from another. And I was just like, <laughs> we do this. Yeah. See, again, communication people, you know, yeah. don't surprise people no with one presents. <laughs> no one told me. And I was just like, um, this is uncomfortable. Thanks, guys. I'm I live in in a city and I don't have any money yeah it's just like it's not fair. I can barely afford to get to work um sorry it's just like the gift is I'm here yeah I showed up I didn't quit today <laughs> I didn't quit today <laughs> uh but yeah back to what you were saying sorry to interrupt there I just had to toss that in oh yeah so like regifting. I don't know if I've ever done it personally maybe there's been like things of like a gift basket that I've gotten and like you break it apart and like maybe I'll just give things like you know something that like I don't want or or need and I'll pass Mm -hmm. it on to to someone else um Mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on like like what if you got something for someone and then you found out that they regifted it see that's my thing with it is I think I'm okay with regifting if there's a very small likelihood that the two parties would find out. Yes, I I you agree know? with you. Um, like I think if it was, well, I don't know. I I'd really try and put a lot of thought into gifts, so I would probably personally yeah. be a little bit hurt. 
Um, I would understand if it's from someone who like was more of an acquaintance and I was just kind of taking a swing yes. at whether they were going to like it for that. But like if my friends or family regifted something I give them, I would be so upset. Um, exactly. So, exactly. Like, yeah. The thing is, is I would never, I would never take something and regift it to you. Like that would feel very wrong. Yeah. To me. Yeah. And if like, and if, you know, you did that or another close friend did that, I would be like, oh, okay. Yeah. But I'd I think be pretty like, hurt. <laughs> yeah. But like, if you get something kind of cool, like, you know, even if, you know, like sometimes, um, in companies you might get like a marketing gift right or something if you get something that it's like you have an acquaintance and you're like this is really cool and they would really like it oh that i have no like problem golden with. yeah like yeah that that's totally fine so yeah as long as like mm-hmm. maybe the other person doesn't find out like they're tar- part of two completely separate friend groups i think that's okay but like for people you're close to i would not I likely would no. not re-gift something that was given to me by, like, a close no. friend because, like, they know me well enough that I would probably like it anyway and wouldn't want to re-gift it. So exactly. those are my thoughts on re-gifting. Yeah. I, I, I share those. I share those thoughts. Like, I think, yeah, with acquaintan- with acquaintances, to- like, I think it's all right. But with your close people and stuff, it's, like, I, don't, I would be hurt by – I don't know if I'd be hurt, but I would be, like, kind of, like, oh – um, so with knowing that I would feel that way, I wouldn't do that with somebody else. Yeah. That yeah. And like to. one example I can think of is if someone got me, like, I, I'm pretty sure someone got me like a bottle of red wine and, mm-hmm. or like, and someone else got me like craft beer or something. I don't drink those so yeah. that I would just pass on to someone else and not feel bad about it. Right. Like it would just go to waste to me. Like I'm not going to touch it. Um, exactly. And that's fine. Like they probably didn't know that I don't drink a lot of wine so or beer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So those that's those are my thoughts. It's kind of like very generic gifts that are a bit of a swing mm-hmm. in the dark that I don't think there's an issue with regifting. Yeah. Yeah. But it's if it's like something that somebody put a lot of thought into, then like, no. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Do we have any other like hot fire questions? Um, like that was a spicy question. Yeah, that was a spicy question. Um, what if you got someone a really expensive gift and they got you something less expensive? See, I actually don't think I would react badly to that. Like I just, I love giving gifts and it makes, it's like fun for me to get them. But you know, I don't really give gifts with the intention like I need something that matches this back. Like even if it's just like a card, I'm like, oh my God, you thought to get me a card. Oh, you know? I am I make myself so intentional when I am reading someone's card. Like even if like you right? open it and like cash or a check falls out, I'm like, I'm not looking at the money. I'm gonna read your card and absorb mm-hmm. it, right? Like like I try to exactly. like I I love like you kind of like I, I love to give the gift and I love someone's reaction when they mm-hmm. get it. You could like not get me anything. I'd be like, that's cool. Like, do you love what you got though? Like that's kind of, I don't know if that's, it's probably some psychological needy thing, but we won't go there tonight. Um, I'm kind of the Yeah, same. I just get, yeah. I get so excited, especially when I find someone that perfect thing and I'm just like, oh, this is just what they mm-hmm. wanted. Like I get so excited for them. Um, yeah. So. And that's kind of, yeah. And like, I think that's kind of where I wanted to go with that too, is it's just like, sometimes you find the perfect thing and it's a bit more expensive, but like, it is the perfect thing that you know is going to make them so happy. Right. And I think part of it too is like, you know, I'm kind of getting like, when you get to a point where like, maybe you have a bit more money that you can put towards Christmas, I can go, I'll go do that. And like, if somebody gives me something back that like, isn't as expensive I'm not going to be like why didn't you get me an $100 gift because I got you one because I'm just kind of like I don't know what your situation is oh for sure financially but it's also like I who am I like I don't know um like I'm always going to assume that the people that are giving me something also feel really special about it you know yeah. and that's what makes me feel good yeah exactly and i feel like that kind of rounds back out to like where we started with like you shouldn't just expect people to get you things 
right? Yes. Like a gift is a gift, you know, by definition. <laughs> it's not like a right. Yes. So that's kind of like my final thought on it is like if if you are given things, like you just be so grateful, right? Because yeah. obviously someone was thinking about you and mm-hmm. thought that you might enjoy this, this thing or experience that that they got you. So be grateful. That's, that's all I can yes. say about that. I like that last thought. That's a really nice one. All right. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode and hopefully got some tips. Definitely mm-hmm. share your experiences with uh, gift giving and gift receiving to our mm-hmm. email address. It's tea with Laura Rachel at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and we'll definitely mm-hmm. share your experience if you send it in to us. Please, please, please tell me um, all your stories yeah. about your um, awkward first um, holidays with <laughs> your partner's families. I feel like we I all have one. Know. <laughs> just please we need to be together in solidarity yeah yeah we can't be the only ones over here that had an awkward first oh. experience with christmases and and other uh celebrations uh mm-hmm. if you enjoyed this podcast definitely share it with friends and family maybe someone you had an awkward gift giving experience and now you guys are cool maybe they would mm-hmm. like to listen to this episode too uh you can also leave us a, a five star review on apple podcast and spotify rachel is there anything else our listeners need to know i think that is everything for tonight excellent and always remember do not give pets as presents it is just wrong think about the poor little animal's life unless you had a discussion and you are like in this together but then even then you know what's going to happen to this pet if that relationship ever were to end Always plan for the worst when you're at your happiest. And with that, live like tea. (laughs) Live like tea.